to produce our own energy even during periods of low sunshine, I would like to further develop the thermoacoustic sterling into a powerful engine. Unlike my kinematic sterling engines, the thermoacoustic concept promises low maintenance and long-lasting continuous operation. Therefore, I have recently done a significant amount of fundamental research. This included testing high-pressure resistance 3D printed parts made from fiber reinforced engineering filaments for the thermoacoustic gas cycle. The development of a balancing mechanism and the use of linear and stepper motor generators. Improving the heat exchangers and setting up a test bench to advance the development of the thermoacoustic sterling. Now I can finally start to further develop the engine and make it more powerful. In the last few weeks I haven't really made any progress with the thermoacoustic sterling engine because I first had to research a few basics for its further development. However, many significant improvements to the engine are already in the construction stage. For instance, I haven't yet worked on optimizing the feedback loop at all. As a result of my intensive experiments with various filaments, including fiber reinforced types, I am now able to produce highly complex, high pressure resistance 3D printed components very quickly. This allows for the rapid testing of different thermoacoustic geometries and boost pressures of up to 10 bar as well as various working gases such as helium. This offers great potential for improvement. The design of the feedback loop can greatly influence the flow of thermoacoustic energy back to the core branch and significantly increase performance. Since I want to try out the experimental approach first to get to know the engine better and only later carry out theoretical calculations and simulations with Delta EC, a well-functioning rapid prototyping workflow with 3D printing is very important in order to obtain results quickly. So far I have only considered basic parameters such as wavelengths of sound, gas displacement amplitude and penetration depth for the design. Thanks to my many Stirling engines, some of which are very powerful, I have learned the importance of getting as much heat as possible into the engine in the heater and as much heat as possible out of the engine in the cooler. There is much potential for improvement in the main cooler of my thermoacoustic Stirling engine, which is obviously undersized. With very little effort, I can try out different configurations here, as aluminium parts or soft soldered components are sufficient. For the burner, I am still working with a simple soldering torch that distributes the heat unevenly and makes comparative measurements difficult. A simple ring burner is already under construction and will not only make heating easier, but also provide a more even and comparable energy supply. The stack, or a generator, is the most important heat exchanger in which the traveling wave is induced. So far, I have been using fairly coarse 40 mesh stainless steel sieves here, but experiments with finer sieves would certainly be worthwhile. Due to the constantly increasing power, balancing becomes necessary, which I achieved using a lever. This also enables the use of different generator concepts thanks to the oscillating pivot point, making the use of the linear generator more flexible and, thanks to its direct use as a balancing mass, more allergent. The conversion of thermoacoustic energy into electrical energy is of central importance and has a significant impact on overall efficiency. In the near future I will run more comparative tests on different oscillating stepper motors and linear generators. I will also continue testing the bidirectional impulse turbine. The concept of the linear generator is very elegant in itself and the use of its moving parts for the much needed balancing mass makes it even more attractive. However, this is offset by the huge amount of construction work in Wolft and by the question of whether it is possible to achieve reasonable efficiency levels with an acceptable level of effort. Using ready-made stepper motors that oscillate at the pivot point of the lever is simple and quick replacement makes the concept highly flexible. In extensive tests, I have demonstrated the satisfactory efficiency of stepper motors that are not too small. However, a brushless or simple DC motor would be more effective as a generator for production use later on. The engine's output is still so low that rectifying the generated low voltage alternating current into direct current using a standard bridge rectifier consumes a large proportion of the energy. The use of active 
or ideal diodes works almost loss free with very low voltage drop and is more effective at least at the very low voltages. I have a lot of further developments planned for the thermoacoustic Stirling engine in the near future. Hopefully some of these will improve the engine's performance. I will report back here soon with my results and until then I look forward to hearing your opinions, suggestions and help here on YouTube or Discord. Thank you very much for your participation and for watching.